shaping the system. So, you know, just as the internet has given us information freedom, for example, cryptocurrencies are going to provide us with financial freedom. 3D printing is going to provide us with consumer freedom. And all the major, he basically makes the point that all the major preconditions for revolution, and we talked about this yesterday with the food riots and so forth, now exist in the United States, Britain, and other developed Western countries, because the elites are rapidly losing control over the power of information itself, and therefore are finding it harder to maintain this centralized control over human beings. So this technology, this open source revolution that he talks about, is allowing us to become less dependent on the system. We're seeing more grassroots, voluntarist networks of people working together with technology, with cryptocurrencies. And um, it's having the effect of making us less dependent on their rigged system. So when you've got, you know, millions and millions of people working on this technology, really smart people, that's going to turn the tide. And it doesn't matter how many armored vehicles they buy, when the fundamental foundation of society is shifted and empowerment comes back to the people, to the grassroots, uh, it's game over for anybody who wants this this global oligarchy. Yeah, you know, that that's, I think, the key thing is that, can we out innovate them? Can we get the people who are top scientists, who are top uh, uh, developers? Can we get them to work in their own interests instead of for the in the interest of a small elite who want to control everybody? That's really, I think, the question. And of course, the high ground is going to be the internet. It's going to be free speech, and whether or not we can keep that. Uh, out of the hands of the government. The government is doing everything they can to attack it from every different angle. I mean, you've even got a key component of these trade agreements is essentially bringing in internet censorship in the name of copyright enforcement. Uh, they couldn't get that passed in any of the legislatures in America or in Europe, and so they're trying to bring that in in the back door in these trade agreements. But then we also see a major realignment going on in the United States within the with the FCC coming in and now asserting that it has control, regulatory control all over the internet and then trying to shut down uh, net neutrality at the same time it appears that they're going to approve a merger of Comcast and so they're going to make this gigantic centralized centralized control from a corporate standpoint to try to control not only content but especially the pipelines of the internet so there's this is a battle that's going back and forth I think we need to get people to look at this we've had a lot of stories, a lot of movies about soldiers who went to war for the highest uh, motivations and then realized that they were being used, that they'd been betrayed, that they'd been deceived, and then doing the right thing. I've not seen that so much about engineers and scientists. The only time I can remember seeing that recently was in the latest Bourne movie where you've got this uh, scientist who starts talking about what she did to Bourne and the other people. And she gets this gleam in her eye. She's very excited about the technological breakthrough that she came up with and, and just the idea of what she's doing. And then he kind of stares at her and she kind of pauses a moment and says, uh, oh, yeah, you know, and kind of realizes, has an aha moment about the consequences of her technology. I think that's what we need to really drive home to scientists and engineers is to think about the consequences. Well, precisely because technology is neutral. It depends on who's in control yes. of it. But as you said, it's it's regulation versus decentralization, isn't it? That's the mm -hmm. battle. And I think it's a battle that we can win and we are winning. Um, a quote, a really good quote out of the article is from Steele, this former CIA agent, is Top-down power has failed in a most spectacular manner, and bottom-up consensus power is emerging. Not in my neighborhood is beginning to trump because I say so. The one unlimited resource we have on this planet is the human brain. So again, he's talking about people rejecting the dictates of the organized oligarchy from above, which is losing its power because it's losing the power to centralize control. And that's causing the emergence of these decentralized networks that are using technology to help people free themselves and become less dependent on the state in terms of consumerism, information, and financial freedom. So with all that coming together with technology improving, that's the positive. That's a really optimistic take that we can draw from. Uh, this article, I really encourage people to go and read it at The Guardian. It's also linked on InfoWars and featured stories today. Yeah, there's another quote in there. He says, open source everything makes truth rather than violence the currency of power. And contrasting that to the, uh, you know, uh, because I say so at the point of a gun, that's a key thing. Truth rather than violence as the currency of power. Boy, I, I certainly hope that is what's going to happen because, you know, Paul, 
I've spoken many times about uh, the book, The Fourth Turning by Strauss and Howe. I think that that's very important research that they've, they've gone back, back to the middle 1400s through uh, American and English history, looking at a cycle that about every 80 years, there's a massive generational, is, is driven by generations, and there's a massive change in society about every 80 years or so. And uh, we're coming up to that. And that just so happens to coincide with the time frame that uh, so many of these central planners and uh, futurist thinkers have been talking about with everything, the 2020 to 2025 time frame. And uh, they pretty much called uh, what was going to happen in 2008 uh, about 18 years before it happened. They said they didn't know what was going to happen, but it was going to be something big. So, uh, yeah, I want to get your take on that. I want to cover that other article that uh, went up today about the veteran who's getting harassed by his homeowners association when we come back from the break that's just pretty that's, that's pretty amazing it's one of the reasons why i won't own a home where there's a homeowners association sometimes democracy gets out of control and it happens even at the lowest levels when you don't have protection for individual rights we'll be right back Every business owner knows how tough it is to get financing for their business. Whether the cash is needed for expansion, repairs, or growth, when you need financing, you need a reliable source. Banks are happy to hold your deposits, but don't bother to ask them for a business loan. For 10 years, Merchant Capital Source has been helping small businesses just like yours get the money they need. If your business needs as much as $250,000, Merchant Capital Source can deliver in as little as three to five days, even if you have poor credit. If you've been in business for six months and produce at least $15,000 in monthly sales, there's a good chance you'll qualify and talk about hassle free. We don't need to see your tax returns, financial statements, or business plans. Rated A plus by the Better Business Bureau. Join the thousands of business owners who've learned the secret of using Merchant Capital Source to meet their capital needs. Log on to mccash.com right now for a free quote. That's mccash.com or call 800-296-0772. That's 800-296-0772. 800-296-0772. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. It's been said, those who control the food, control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. It's not a flag on a pole. In fact, it is barely noticeable. It's a flag in a flower pot sitting right here at the front door. And the HOA in this community is telling the homeowner the flag has got to go. The homeowner is Larry Murphy, and he's drawn a line in the sand. They're trying to uh, get out kind of foreclosure on my house so the house could go. So that's why the flag's upside down. 
Murphy lives in the Tynes condominium at Sweetwater. The HOA allows flags to be flown in certain locations during daylight hours. Murphy fought the HOA several years ago, and that case was settled. They settled. And I thought that would be the end of it. Fine. But Pretty amazing story. And I've got Paul again. Joseph Watson on the line. He's got that story up on Infowars.com. A 73-year-old veteran threatened with foreclosure for displaying an American flag. And, of course, this is his homeowners association that's coming after him. Paul? That's that's a pretty amazing story. I've seen homeowners associations do some pretty outrageous thing. They're trying to uh, foreclose on him with an eight thousand dollar lien that they put on uh, him, a fine. Yeah, and it, all for displaying a, a tiny American flag in a plant pot. What's even more ludicrous about this story is this seventy-year-old veteran, Larry Murphy, actually settled out of court with them from a previous dispute about the same issue. Then they came back, made another rule that specifically targeted him, saying that homeowners couldn't have any unauthorized objects in their <laughs> plant pots or foliage. So, of course, then he violated that law, even though it's um, it's his right to do so. Legal experts have said that the Florida statute says he can display the flag. So they slapped him with an $8,000 fine. He's been fined $100 a day for every day he displays this tiny flag, which is, which is barely noticeable. And now they've, as he said, filed for foreclosure on his house. So, as he said before the break, you know, <laughs> democracy doesn't always work out for the best. This is why America's a republic, why it has yeah. uh, the Constitution to protect individual rights. Because, um, you know, oh. they're, they're just... Go ahead. I wonder if these are some people who have moved down to uh, New York from Bloomberg's New York where they have just learned that you can just arbitrarily ban anything you don't like. You know, whether it's uh, the size of the soda that you drink, you don't like this guy's American flag, you just ban it and they've got to get prior approval from you before they put it up. I think that they're, they're taking their mandate from the state, from the government, because, of course, we've had numerous stories over the past few years about cities harassing residents for having vegetable gardens in their front yard. So whereas this isn't government, this is homeowners association, they're kind of taking their cue from that that oppressive tyranny that we've seen disallowing people from doing what they want to do, having vegetable gardens. And again, it you know, it represents this kind of clash between the mindsets of rugged individualism, which is what most Americans used to embrace, and this new kind of tattletale power trip collectivism, the example for which is being set by the state. So it's no surprise that this homeowners association is harassing this man for having this barely noticeable flag in his front yard. And, you know, there might be more to it than uh, just a, a little power trip by these uh, people who may have a personal dispute with this guy. As you pointed out in the article, it was just last week that we had that happen in uh, Texas in an apartment they said that this guy hanging an American flag from his balcony was an affront to the Muslim community. You know, American flags, uh, uh, we're told, are an affront to Muslims, to uh, people who come here from Mexico, and uh, we just need to uh, ban those things and hide that. No, I've seen the same thing in Britain where it's, it's now frowned upon to fly St. George's flag because it might offend some minorities. And again, in, in Texas and other areas on Cinco de Mayo, we've had students kicked out of school for wearing American flag T-shirts. So across the board, they're frowning on the display of any kind of patriotism whatsoever. That's right. We've got to ban those symbols. And that really touches on that article that you had yesterday, which I encourage people to read uh, that's up on uh, Drudge today, where he's talking about how they're bringing in the massive demographic surge because they want to educate these people from the bottom up and that's really what I think it's all about. Thank you so much Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. We'll be right back. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks, I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the assault.
Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level.